Hello everybody, I hope you're all really, really well. Well today, Finnegan and I, hello, we're all going to go to the farm. And on the farm, we can find animals and we can also find crops. Now, the farmers who grow crops, those are called arable farms. And then the farms that have animals on them are called livestock farms. And if you want to know where you get your milk from, it's from a farm because the, the farmer has lots of cows and he milks them. And the same with your eggs. And also, and also butter, of course, and cheese. That all comes from, because it comes from milk. And uh, then, of course, we can go to buy our fruit and vegetables in the supermarket or maybe the corner shop or maybe you have it delivered in a box. But it all comes from farms. So we're going to go to some farms today. Finnegan and I and he is under strict instructions to behave himself and not go anywhere near the animals. Finnegan. Okay, I think he's got it out of his system now because he's done it to you instead. Sorry about that. So the first place we're going to go is we're going to see what animals are on a farm. So there, there could be some cows. There could be some pigs. There could be some goats and sheep. And there could be some hens and chicks. So let's see. Do you remember when we had the chicks at school? Do you remember? It was so exciting watching them hatch, wasn't it? Well, we're going to see if we can see some of those things. And this is a tune you know really well because it's London Bridge is falling down. But we're not doing those words. We're doing these new words. But you've never, we've never done this before. But I thought you might like to learn it today. Animals live on a farm, on a farm, on a farm. Animals live on a farm with the farmer. So what animals are we going to find? Mm, I can hear a moo. <coughs> Finnegan, was that you or was that a pig? <laughs> well, maybe we're going to find some cows and pigs. Cows and pigs live on a farm, on a farm, on a farm, cows and pigs live on a farm with the farmer. Now, what about this animal that goes meh? That's a sheep, isn't it? But we also have one that goes meh, meh, really similar, but it's a goat. Goats are really clever at climbing and goats have long ears. Um, and they don't have the curly, curly wool that um, sheep have. But we're going to go and see those things now. Goats and sheep live on a farm, on a farm, on a farm. Goats and sheep live on a farm with the farmer. And then we're going to see these ones. <laughs> And cheep, cheep, cheep. That's right, hens and chicks. Hens and chicks live on a farm, on a farm, on a farm. Hens and chicks live on a farm with the farmer. Now, do you know what the farmer has down in the field? And this is what Finnegan is so desperate to see. Tractor Finnegan, there's going to be a tractor. He loves tractors, especially blue tractors. Down in the barn, early in the morning, see the little tractor waiting in the shade. Here comes the farmer to turn the little handle. It's one of those tractors with petrol that goes pop. Can you do that? Turn on your engine and then go pop. 
I know you like that, always makes you laugh. Anyway, now I wonder what else was in the barn, in the farmyard. Hmm, I wonder if the farmer has a dog. Let's see. I think he does. And we're going to find out what his name is. Look. B I N G O. Bingo. There was a farmer who had a dog, and Bingo was his name. Oh, B I N G O. B I N G O. B I N G O. And Bingo was his name. Oh. Now we're going to take away the B for Bingo. And we're going to have to clap, but because I'm holding this up, I'm going to tap my desk like this, which sounds a tiny bit like a clap. So when, instead of saying the B for Bingo, we're going to clap. So you've got to say it quietly in your head, okay? It's very tricky. There was a farmer who had a dog, and Bingo was his name. Oh. I N G O I N G O I N G O and Bingo was his name O. So I'm going to take away the I, the I, and now we've only got the little dogs, the N, the G, and the O left. There was a farmer who had a dog. And Bingo was his name, O. N-G-O. 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 And Bingo was his name, O. So now I've got to take away the, the N, the N sound. And so we've got to do three claps. There was a farmer who had a dog, and Bingo was his name, O. G O G O G O and Bingo was his name, O. So I'm going to take away the the G, which makes a G sound. There was a farmer who had a dog, and Bingo was his name. Oh, 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 oh and Bingo was his name. Oh, now I'm going to take away the O, which does have an O sound, or it has an O sound for orange. So. Now we've got to do it all quietly in our head and do all the claps and no letters out of our mouths. There was a farmer who had a dog and Bingo was his name-o. And Bingo was his name-o. Were you able to do it? It's tricky, isn't it? I hope you didn't make a mistake, but it's a fun, fun song. All right, I'm going to put all the letters back on. So we've got to start with a B for bingo. So here's the B. And then we need to have an I, which has an I sound. There we are. Then we need an N that's got a N sound. Then we have to have a G, which has a G sound. And then, last of all, we need an O that has an O sound, although in this song it has an O sound. Bingo. There we are. So there's all of the bingos back on the, on the board with his kennel. And look, he's a lucky dog. He's got a bone. Right, so we'll put Bingo out of the way and we're going to sing another song now down in the farm about the farmers in his dell. But it's not the one that we do at school where we play the game and we have lots of children and we go in a circle because 
unless you've got a huge family with 12 or 13 brothers and sisters, I think that one's a bit tricky. So we're going to do a different one. And it's the same tune, but it's got different words and we can do some actions. And it's all about the farmer planting seeds. So we've been into a farm that had animals. And now we went to a livestock farm and now we're going to a farm that has got a crops, an arable farm. Um, and we're going to plant, what shall we plant? Shall we plant some carrots today? Yes, I think so. Because do you know what? I planted a carrot yesterday. Well, I've done a little experiment in my kitchen and maybe you could ask mummy and daddy if you could do it too. When you chop off the end of a carrot, now you mustn't chop it because you need a sharp knife. You must ask mummy or daddy to do it for your one of your grown-ups at home. When you chop the end off a carrot, the bit that would have had the green bit sticking out of it, you can put that into a little glass of water and it's supposed to start growing new green leaves. And then you can plant it in the ground and you'll get a new carrot. We'll see. Right, but my potatoes are doing very well. I've got four sprouts up now of potatoes, so hopefully lots and lots of potatoes in a few months' time. But now we're going to plant carrots today in our story. The farmer's in his dell, the farmer's in his dell. Hi-ho, a dairy -o, the farmer's in the dell. Now, I forgot to tell you, a dell is a bit of a funny word. It's not a word we use. It's spelt d, d, e, e, and then l, 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 l. And it means uh, a nice little space. Uh, it's usually um, quite flat where you could plant. It will be really good for a farmer because you could plant lots of things. So that's what a dell is. So we'll just start again. Now I've explained that. The farmer's in his dell. The farmer's in his dell. Hey ho, a dairy -o, The farmer's in his dell. The farmer plants some seeds. The farmer plants the seeds. Hi ho, a dairy -o, The farmer plants the seeds. The sun comes out to shine, the sun comes out to shine. Hi-ho, a dairy -o, the sun comes out to shine. The rain begins to fall, the rain begins to fall. Hi-ho, a dairy -o, the rain begins to fall. The seed begins to grow, the seed begins to grow. Hi-ho, a dairy -o, the seed begins to grow. The vegetables are here, the vegetables are here. Hi-ho, a dairy -o, the vegetables are here. The farmer digs them up, the farmer digs them up. Hi-ho, a dairy -o, the farmer digs them up. Now it's time to eat, now it's time to eat. Hey-ho, a dairy -o, we've carrots now to eat. I hope you enjoyed doing that song. And remember, you could play your instruments if you want to there. So you've got your shaker that you can do the raindrops for. And maybe you could find something else that you think would be nice for the sun. A sparkly sound. And maybe you could think of something very small to be the little seeds growing in the field that can then get into a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger noise when they start growing. Oh, I hope you have lots of fun with that. Now, I've got one of the, my favourite, favourite poems to read you. And this is all about a king who would like some butter. And the butter comes from the milk and the milk comes from the cow. Well, actually, butter is made from cream. But um, when the, you can mix milk, if it's creamy milk, and eventually you'll get butter. But it takes a long time. When I was a little girl, my grandmother, one of them, used to live on a farm in Ireland. And we went to see her 
brother and his children. And I had a go at making butter and it was great, great fun, but quite hard work. Uh, but I do remember that very fondly from when I was little. So let me just get the book. Now, here it is. Now, it's from a lovely book called The Christopher Robin Verse Book, written by A.A. A. Milne who wrote all about Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh. Can you see? Look, there's Winnie the Pooh climbing up the stairs and there's Christopher Robin. And I have to say, Winnie the Pooh is one of my absolute favourite fictional characters. So here we have the King's Breakfast. The king asked the queen and the queen asked the dairymaid, could we have some butter for the royal slice of bread? The queen asked the dairymaid. The dairymaid said, certainly, I'll go and tell the cow now before she goes to bed. The dairymaid, she curtsied and went and told the old knee, don't forget the butter for the royal slice of bread. Now, the Alderney is a cow. Look, there it is. Can you see? And there's the pretty dairymaid. The Alderney said sleepily, Oh, you'd better tell His Majesty that many people nowadays like marmalade instead. The dairymaid said, Fancy! And went to tell Her Majesty. She curtsied to the Queen and she turned a little red. Excuse me, your majesty, for taking of the liberty, but marmalade is tasty if it's very thickly spread. The queen said, oh, and went to tell his majesty. Talking of the butter for the royal slice of bread, many people think that marmalade is nicer. Would you like to try a little marmalade instead? The king said, bother. And then he said, oh, deary me. The king sobbed, oh, deary me, and went back to bed. Nobody, he whimpered, could call me a fussy man. I only want a little bit of butter for my bread, the queen said. There, there, and went to the dairymaid. The dairymaid said, there, there, and went to the shed. The cow said, there, there, I didn't really mean it. Here's milk for his porringer and butter for his bread. The queen took the butter and brought it to his majesty. The king said, butter, eh? And bounced out of bed. Nobody, he said, as he kissed her tenderly. Nobody, he said, as he slid down the banisters. Nobody, my darling, could call me a fussy man. But I do like a little bit of butter on my bread. And look. There's the king and the queen dancing and he's so happy. He's got his bread in his hand and he's taken a big mouthful out of it. I hope you enjoyed that story. Well, I shall see you next time. And until then, lots and lots of love. Bye bye.